This thesis seeks to analyze and speculate on forms of architecture not oriented around human use and occupation. Post-human architectures broadly defines buildings designed with more than humans as the active users and occupiers. The project seeks to unpack the architectural possibilities, problems, and contradictions of an imminent future where humans have become alienated from production of technology, food, and data. The philosophical framework is based on what Kerry Wolf describes as ontological posthumanism, where human society is augmented by technological innovations as a means of preserving a highly anthropocentric worldview. The project proposes a series of architectural speculations of four building typologies that are significantly changing due to rapid technological advancements in autonomous robotics, artificial intelligence, and data interconnectivity. The Automated Fulfillment Center, Data Center, Semiconductor Chip Fab, and Autonomous Greenhouse create, transform, and store physical and digital objects that serve humans. Each typology deals with a different subject and their respective requirements to ensure that the building operates at peak efficiency. Architectural speculations are based on existing building designs and possible future technologies as seen in experimental projects, research, and patents. I am also basing some of these speculations on a couple years of experience working in an architecture practice designing fulfillment centers and data centers for Amazon and AWS. Studies will demonstrate changes in scale, layout, site, materiality, climate, and building technology. I am arguing future economic, political, technological, and environmental conditions will require architects to design buildings less oriented around humans to the point that they might be totally devoid of human life for day-to-day -day operations. These buildings will significantly affect the agency of architects, the role of human labor, and the way we perceive and interact with the constructed environment. The guiding principles of the research and design methods are based on economic and political factors, architectural conventions, building code, and urban to rural development patterns. In buildings without humans, the way we site certain structures may change significantly, opening up new opportunities for buildings to be sited in more urban or more remote contexts. The grid is a highly important part of these buildings, from the scale of land to individual architectural elements. The one mile by one mile squares created by the rectangular survey system clearly defines much of the western United States even 230 years after it was implemented. The roughly 50 by 50 foot typical column grid of industrial buildings is a standard defined by material, logistics, and architectural conventions. Building code restrictions, like fire code and occupancy, are limiting factors for the scale and efficiency of these buildings. Without humans, a building is only constrained by site and material, which could both expand and densify buildings. The Automated Fulfillment Center is becoming post-human, as companies like Amazon continue to develop methods of replicating human laborers with machines. These types of facilities range in size from 250,000 square feet single-story warehouses up to 4 million square feet robotically augmented multi-story facilities. Humans and robots currently work together, separated by fences to limit injury. Robots perform the most menial and intensive tasks while humans perform the more complex and challenging tasks. In the most advanced facilities, storage is no longer static racks of goods, as they are picked up and moved as drive robots bring them to workers when an order is placed. Racks are arranged based on demand, creating gradients of desire driven by efficiency. Soon, the complex tasks previously performed by humans will be automated, allowing for changes to scale and building layout. The Future Fulfillment Center will territorialize the landscape by using physical and digital logistics networks to connect people and goods. While the singular fulfillment center grows as local demand increases, the larger network of delivery centers and air freight hubs will also grow to support domestic and international demand for goods. In my design for the Exurban Fulfillment Center, the building grows as regional demand for goods increases. The 50-foot column grid informs interior layout and future development of more modules to be added in the future. On one side of the building, 
An automated racking system is added for long-term storage of goods that can be transferred into the main building as demand increases. On the ground floor, inbound and outbound processes bring goods in to be stowed, and when orders are placed, the goods are brought down from the upper floors to be packed and shipped. On the upper floors of the fulfillment center, the entire floor plate is occupied by robotic drive units, basically big Roombas, which pick up pods filled with goods to be picked and sent down to packing. The layout of the floor is constantly changing, determined by item demand and purchasing frequency. In section, the typical multi-story fulfillment center is roughly 100 feet tall. Without humans, clear heights can be lowered for increased density and floor plates can be interrupted for easier vertical movement of goods. The building could also become much taller, allowing for much more storage space to act as a regional distribution and delivery center. The ground floor is a maze of conveyance systems, robotic drive units, and robotic arms all operating towards the common goal of peak efficiency in bringing in goods and sending them out. On the upper floors, the robotic drive units hum along, only taking short breaks when their battery runs low or they need maintenance, performed by another robot, of course. The division of operations and the density of the systems is visible in this small chunk of the building. This animated video shows the perspective of the drive unit robot as it traverses the gridded floor of storage pods and other robots. The data center might be the closest to a humanless building that we have today. The unseen cloud continues to rapidly grow, demanding more physical space as we continue to fill hard drives and servers with emails, videos, photos, and streams of text. Public outcry is growing against data centers as they demand as much water and energy as the rest of the towns they occupy, though without them, we would be digitally disconnected. Only a few workers are physically in the buildings each day to maintain servers and add or remove storage drives a task which could be controlled remotely and performed using robots. In the future, the data center may become a continuous network of servers moving across the landscape both above and below ground. The previously unseen digital infrastructure network will become more visible as Internet use and demand continues to exponentially grow. The infrastructure scale project of constructing a continuous underground building is only matched by the massive scale of the digital world we have created for ourselves. Artificial intelligence and surveying tools define the path the building follows to avoid obstacles above and below ground and optimize the layout of the overall structure based on the water and energy network nearby. Vast solar arrays that follow the building provide the large amounts of energy necessary for cooling. For efficiency purposes, the building is mostly below ground, but where the building can't be below ground, it will emerge above ground like the original data centers we know now. The building pulls cold groundwater for cooling, while the only visible trace of the building itself is the cooling infrastructure that dots the landscape above. The raised floor of the data center helps cool the racks of servers, which are maintained by small mobile robotic arms that can patch and install new servers, further expanding the world's digital infrastructure one hard drive at a time. Greenhouses and vertical farms are becoming increasingly more automated to offset higher labor costs and to ensure consistency of the plants grown inside. As climate issues worsen in the near future, controlled indoor agriculture may be one of the solutions to ensure a consistent food supply for humans. Significant investment is being made in these systems, further enabled by technological advancements with sensors, AI, and robotics.
Plants can be watered and lit with grow lights at will, based on their need, rather than larger-scale irrigation techniques. The controlled environment prevents pests and other contaminants from entering the greenhouse. Vertical and horizontal racks of plants occupy large and flat, more traditional greenhouses, as well as taller buildings with a smaller footprint. The future autonomous greenhouse is not just a singular building, but a larger-scale agricultural development that shares resources between buildings growing different crops. The one-mile grid subdivided into four half-mile grid blocks split by roads and paths delineates the size of the building, about 2,800 feet in each direction. The building is split into several planting areas, with a bay of utilities bringing in controlled air, water, and power to sustain the plants. Between the two sides is a robotic harvesting, packaging, and shipping zone, where plant bays move on rails to be systematically harvested and shipped to consumers. On the left, the exploded axon shows where large planters would move towards the middle of the building when the plants are ready for harvesting after being planted and maintained by overhead lights, irrigation, and robot arms. On the right, a small part of the shipping area is shown. This animation shows what a beam-mounted robotic plant maintenance arm may see as it looks over the moving planter boxes, constantly checking on the crops and planting and harvesting when needed. The idea of perspective and representing what we see has been another topic of interest for the project, as it can be hard to understand how advanced robots perceive and understand space. The 360-degree perspective may be a way for humans to control robots in virtual reality or a way for autonomous robots to see for themselves. Semiconductor chip fabs are the most complex buildings in the project, and I am using collages and drawings as a representation tool to understand the bizarre reality and future conditions of the typology. These buildings are highly complex, multi-layered structures filled with precise machinery used to engrave and lithograph tiny chips with billions of transistors. The ground floors of the structures are filled with complex mechanical systems to support the processes of chip making and maintain the clean environment. The interior of these buildings require ultra-clean air and water for all the manufacturing processes, and human workers must wear bunny suits to enter the clean rooms. Individual buildings, or fabs, are connected by overhead tracks for FOOPs, which carry bundles of chip wafers around and between buildings. The complexes expand as technology rapidly grows and requires new buildings for each new technological breakthrough, called nodes. The chip fab represents the hypermodern building as imagined 100 years ago. Highly efficient, with only the necessary tools and machines on the floor plate, with a serious concern for the interior environment. A complex series of logistical processes are required to get semiconductor chips made. Silica quartz is mined, refined, and then cast into large ingots to be sliced into wafers that are sent to fabs to be engraved lithographed and cut down before being installed into your phone, computer, or a manufacturing robot. This logistics network could be a large international operation, or could be increasingly localized as political and economic factors increasingly impact the industry. The semiconductor chip fab of the future is a constantly growing series of structures connected by the vast infrastructure of water, air, chemicals, and robots. Adjacency to water will be an issue for the future, as drought and water scarcity impact all industries and people. As new technological breakthroughs emerge in chip technology, the building also grows to accommodate that, and the same chips that are made in the fab could be used to further augment the complex machines and robotics that make the new generation of silicon life. The clean rooms of semiconductor fabs are filled with lithography and engraving machines, tracks for moving wafers and chips, and all the pipes and ducts to move water, air, and chemicals needed for manufacturing. Without humans, who are the main source of contamination for the delicate silicon, the fab operates as an ultra-pure and hyper-modern factory with the most advanced machines and robotics making more chips for future technologies. The clean interior is contrasted with a messy exterior of large swaths of complex ductwork, 
piping and processing infrastructure used to maintain the precise and uncontaminated environment of the clean rooms. These four typologies may be the most important buildings of the future as we enter the fourth industrial revolution, focusing on digital technology and autonomous complex machines. I want to embrace the bizarre contradictions of the different buildings as they serve humans without physically needing them to operate. We all use these buildings indirectly, and their persistence and expansion in the future are inevitable. The strange speculations of patents and academic research projects could become reality sooner than we expect, and architects and other designers will have to negotiate the issues of this new form of architecture and find new tools and techniques to approach them.